Are you looking for a way to create super strong prints? If so, I'm going to share my secrets with you. So let's jump into it. Welcome to this episode of Shop Talk by DIY3DTech.com. As I'm working to build my motion control system, I needed some very robust motor mounting brackets for my geared steppers, so here they are. And as I created these, I figured this would be a good opportunity maybe to share with you guys my secrets to getting robust prints such as these. Now, stay tuned to the end because I'm going to give you a couple bonus tips at the end for sticking around. Okay, so there are four main tips to this. The first tip I'm going to share with you is layer height. You want as few layers as possible. The more layers you have, the more potential is there is for delamination. So what I use is the max of the 80% rule. So whatever 80% is of my nozzle diameter, that's what I will use for my layer height. So if I'm using a 0.4 millimeter nozzle, that's going to be 0.32 millimeters. If I got a 0.6 millimeter nozzle, then I'm going to be using 0.48. Now I typically round to the lower full number, so 0.4, I will use 0.3. 0.6 I will use 0.4. The situation you have to keep in mind with this number is again you're not laying down a circle when you're putting down plastic. There is a compression factor where the nozzle is actually pushing down on the plastic and creating an oblong. So with this 80% rule 20% of that is, is ending up as compression. So you want to have or need to have that compression to get a robust print where it's going to push those two layers together. If you don't do that, then you run the risk of delamination. The second tip is temperature. I print hotter when I do something like this than I do for normal prints. So if I typically print 205, I'll probably print around 210. You can do some experimentations. I found usually for PLA, going about another five really helps. Now, on the negative side of this, you will get more stringing in your parts. It's just a fact of life, so you have a little bit more cleanup, but you're gonna get a little bit more robust part because as you're pushing that, that greater amount of plastic out because you're using big layers, what's happening is that temperature is, is allowing those to become stickier and stick together better. Number three, now this one is kind of the key to all this and works with the other two, and that is the type of layers. So what I do is after putting the first two in, I go down, I use Cura in this, in this case. You can use basically any slicer, but all kind of works similar, and find out how many layers that this will slice at that given uh, layer height. So this particular piece right here is the tallest piece. It is 115 layers at 0.4. So what I go into Cura is I tell it I will have one bottom layer and the remaining layers will be top layers. And in addition to being top layers, they will be top surface layers. And what that means is Cura will do a better job at getting the plastic closer together as it fills it in. Now this is the important piece is those skins because even if you tell it to do top layers you may not get the complete fill in. I'm not, I don't want to say infill but actually coverage of that surface where if you say top it's going to cover it out which brings me to tip number four is flow. I use about 102 to 103 depending on the plastic because what I also want to make sure is that the flow fills in all the surface gaps because both of these pieces are completely solid pieces. Now you could say Mr. DIY3DTech.com, why don't I just set it for 100% infill? Well, the problem is, is you're still creating infill. I don't want infill, I want surfaces. The surfaces are what gives this the, the impressive strength that you can achieve by printing in this manner. So keep that in mind. So those four combined together will give you a very robust print. Now, in, in full disclosure, that print may not be very pretty because number one, we're printing it hotter, we're printing in bigger layers, uh, and, and also we're, we're over extruding. So uh, especially in some of the vertical structures, you'll get a lot of striations. So with that, to clean that up, to make it look prettier, here's one of your bonus tips. Take a razor blade like this, and again, very carefully, 
rake it across the plastic with pr uh, pressure and what that will do is level out these uneven striations that you'll see and again you can do it on the surfaces any type of flat surface here but again be very careful not to cut yourself this is sharp so the last bonus tip and this is optional but again it works very well and I'll be doing some more uh, on this in the near future is annealing these parts putting them in an oven at about the glass temperature of whatever plastic you're using for about 45 minutes to an hour what that's going to do is really allow those layers to set up together and you will get a super super strong part so hopefully you found this interesting if you did hey give it a big thumbs up swag shop will be up there and if you got any more tips on how you go about getting very robust parts let me know in the comments below i'd love to hear from you guys cheers and we'll see you in the next video please click like below and subscribe to the channel